And at one point, Drake. Yeah. Comes in, Drake and Nicki come into the picture. Yes. How, do you know, were you around or how Hell did yeah. all that come I together? Remember, uh, I probably came around like a little bit, probably around the same time. It was all around the same time that way. I don't know who was first or whatever, but I do remember that when Jazz was trying to get Wayne around. He probably had been trying to get Wayne to listen to Drake way before any of us got around, but Wayne just probably wasn't on it and doing a bunch of shit. So I do remember when Drake came around. I remember when, I think Nicki was probably was there before me. Not like solidified, but Wayne was fucking with her, you know what I'm saying, before me. He was, yeah, he, he was trying to fuck with her. Um, I believe there was a flight, a commercial flight or something. But what? When you first, when you like, you and Drake first kind of uh, talked or exchanged headphones nah, with that, your music? I remember, or? We was, I remember we was on a flight. I forgot where we was going. And, um, he had like some, he had like some pods and he was like, yo, here, take one of, take, take my headphones and like, give me your headphones and like, like, let me hear some of your shit. Like, you can listen to some of my shit. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. I've never had nobody do that before. We were on a flight, got a few hours. So he was listening to my shit and he was like, Damn yeah, man. Now at this point I never watched the grassy. So I'm looking at him like he's the light skinned nigga from Canada that sing and rap that Wayne was telling me about. But nigga's really nice. Like I never watched the grassy, so I don't really know. And I remember he started telling me, like, yeah, man, there used to be times I used to be on the grassy and I used to just go off to the side and listen to the statue. And I was like, the statue. What's that? <laughs> the, 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 the statue was a, a song that I had did and I had a video on Smack on a Smack DVD. Like after I kind of stopped like doing the battles. This is like when Smack used to have like, you know, bring his camera and film you rapping and turn it into like a video for the DVD. So I had a song called The Statue. That's why I called myself on the on the DVD. And he, he quoted like a bar to me when I said it's like looking for the back of an earring on a beach. Like like I said some shit like that. And he said it to me and I was like, damn, he be paying attention. But as I'm listening to the shit on the flight, I'm like, damn. He got some dope shit. You know what I'm saying? I don't think the game was ready for that yet, but he made it where it's like, even if you're not ready, you have nothing. You can't escape this. You know what I'm saying? So, I Did was, you see like Drake yes. becoming Drake at no, that time? No, hold on for a minute. I didn't see him becoming Drake. We knew. Like, we knew. Oh, so you knew he was... No, we he knew. Had something special going no, on. No, we knew. We might not have been like... You know how people used to say shit like, oh, he don't really got the style. Like, he you know, he dressed corny. He don't really got no... But the music? Like, when I heard Forever and Stunt Hard and... Remember when I came back off the road? I came back, I flew back in and Wayne was on the tour bus. And he was like, yo, I want to let you hear some shit. He let me in successful. I was like, damn. I listened to the bars. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like... Like, man, he nice. You know what I'm saying? Like, nice, nice. I remember when Jazz first played us So Far Gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't... We knew, but I mean, when I heard So Far Gone, I remember I looked at Gutter Gutter, I said, my nigga, we in trouble. <laughs> like, I'll never forget when I heard Lust for Life and Ignorant Shit and I've Got to Be Unstoppable. I just remember hearing all them shits and being like... And I, we knew it with Nicki, too. You know what I'm saying? If anybody was paying attention, you knew Nicki was going to pop. Like... Girls like Nikki, and she rapped like a dude, but she wrote her shit. That's what made Nikki stand out. Nikki wrote her shit. We knew what it was with Nikki, and we knew what it was with Drake. The same way everybody else know. How did you feel though? You know what I'm saying? You got so you got Lil Wayne, Drake, Nikki, and even Tiger. You mean like to, in the beginning, or extent. you or you mean like when the success came? Because at the beginning, it at was the, at, at the beginning. It nobody really. It was like, it's kind of like you're just happy to be here. You know what I'm saying? We all happy to just be getting a chance type shit, like, at that point. But when you really get into the logistics of it, uh, you more so just think you waiting your turn. You working, you working to get your shot. You working to get your chance. You putting out music, seeing what's stick. You know what I'm saying? You being supportive. You being, you know, and you going to get your shot. But then you look up and <laughs> niggas be two, four five albums in, you know what I'm saying? And you're like, hold on for a minute. But this is one thing I want to I wanna specify to people because I don't never want people to feel like I'd be salty about my Young Money experience because I, I wasn't. Like, 
Bedrock just hit seven times platinum. That's fucking nuts. That's nuts. And and my my analogy for that be like niggas are try to make jokes about what level of success you didn't reach, but they don't acknowledge the level of success you did reach. You'll overlook that and go to the jokes. All right, we can get to the jokes. We'll get to the jokes. Mills never dropped the album and blah, blah, blah. You was the young money janitor. You was the, the blunt roll up. Like that, ha, ha, ha. We, I like to laugh too. But when you get to the logistics of it, Bedrock went seven times platinum. It's not a joke. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's not a joke. You know what I'm saying? And that's no jokes no more. Bedrock did 100 million streams. It's not a joke no more. We Are Young Money debuted number one on the Billboard charts. It's not a joke no more. We Are Young Money is platinum. It's not a joke no more. So other people will try to be like, you ain't have no success at Young Money. Sheik was on the Benjamins, if I'm not mistaken, right? Sheik Luch is on, it's all about the Benjamins, what you want to yeah. do. You want to be ballers, shock. Sheik Luch is on the record, right? Yeah, I So when it's all said and done, when Sheik Luch die, you think they're going to talk about his solo career or they're going to talk about him every time you put on It's All About the Benjamins? It's, it's, it's all about how you, you... You see how I just broke that down? It's all about how you look at it. Niggas are down players' success. Now, yes, I would have wanted to put out a lot of albums at Young Money, but that ain't what God wanted you to do. You still got your success out of it. Tiger got out of it what he got out of it. Drake got out of it what he got out of it. Nicki got out of it what she got out of it. Jay Mills got out of it what Jay Mills got out of it. Now, what else you going to do with your life, my nigga? You going to sit up here and keep worrying about why you ain't put an album out that young money? Or you going to be appreciative of all the fucking years you had at young money being successful at whatever it was you were doing? That's it. You know what I'm saying? You mentioned Lil Wayne and making bedrock. I think I seen somewhere that he took less so everybody could have equal amounts. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, shout out to Wayne. Because when we was doing that We Are Young Money album, that was my first time dealing with splits, you know, like royalties and how many points I'm going to get, how many points Gutter Gutter going to get, how many points Aubrey Garm, Annika, Jarvis, Carl, how, how much is we all going to get? And, then, you know, when they broke it down, I was like, yo, Wayne took cuts on all the songs he's on with y'all so we could all have like even shit. Because, I mean, he, you know, he's the biggest one at the time. But at that time. So he could have. You know what I'm saying? He could actually Solid legitimately shit. Solid ask shit. for That's more. why when you asked me, was I original member of Young Money? I said, no, I wasn't an original member. Squad Up was the original members. Because you got to keep it solid. Niggas kept it solid with you. Wayne yeah. kept it nothing but solid with me. A lot of niggas might be like, yeah, but Mills, that nigga kind of like stopped you from blossoming, bro. Like that. If it was up to Lil Wayne, I probably would have put out five double albums. But it ain't up to Lil Wayne. It's a business. You still got to go back to the people at Universal that cut the checks. You still got to talk to Birdman and Tez and Slim and this one and that one. And then budgets and radio. And in the midst of all of that, Drake about to come out with Take Care. Just hold on for one quick second. Tiger got Rack City. Hold on for one quick second. We're going to get right back. We're going to get right back. Nikki just, I ain't going to lie, this Starship shit, this shit is like booming. We think she's on to something with this Marge Simpson wig. We're going to get right back to you. Oh shit, Wayne just did How to Love. Hold on for me. We're gonna get back. We're gonna get back to y'all. Trust me, Six Foot Seven is nominated for a Grammy. We will get back to y'all. Oh shit, she will. You know what? We're gonna, we're gonna be, we're gonna get there real quick. I'm on one. Oh shit. Now Drake is doing shit outside of Young Money that's propelling him past this. Nikki is doing shit outside of Young Money that's propelling her past this. Wayne is still Wayne. Not saying that they did anything wrong. They did what they were supposed to do. But if it's 10 to 12 artists on Young Money and three to four of them are multi-platinum successes, I don't know many labels that have it like that. I don't know many labels that have 10 artists and four of them are considered the best of their time. Shit, you'd be lucky to have one. To have one of Drake. on your label. You guys said You'd be three. lucky to have one Drake. To have the right. girl Drake, so you got the the you got the the best new artist as the male, and you got the best new artist as a female, and the CEO is still fucking goat. It's hard to get to everybody. It's hard to get to the J Mills album when Nicki's on a world tour. 
I mean, Drake got more slaps than the Beatles. It's hard to get to the J. Mills project. Nigga, I wouldn't have got to the J. Mills project if I was in the office and we had Drake and Nicki Minaj and Lil Wayne. And I'm being dead fucking real with you. This is me. How much money is that going to bring me back right now? Because the Canadian is showing us some numbers. Nicki is showing us some numbers. That's all it is, bro. It's, it's reality. Some niggas don't want to deal with the reality of it. I'm old enough and I've been in this shit long enough. See, they'll try to paint me like I'd be angry. They won't show all of these clips. They'll take a piece of it and make it sound like a nigga be angry. Nah, a nigga be real. I be asking niggas like, y'all think it was hard for y'all when Drake came out? Imagine what it was like wearing the same uniform. How many shots a night you think we putting up? <laughs> Fuck is you talking about? Nigga, we on the, we on the team with fucking KD. It's Steph, it's LeBron. <laughs> Once in a lifetime shit, I tell niggas all the time, it might be a joke. Like, I'm gonna do some comedy shit one day, and this gonna be one of my sets. Like, this is gonna be like one of my jokes in my sets, pardon me. I always tell people, I know what it's like to be Eddie Jones, and niggas don't catch that. And I be like, yo, Eddie, it's not that Eddie Jones was whack, and I'm not downplaying myself. Maybe I am, depending on how you look at it. <laughs> it's not that Eddie Jones was whack, but when Kobe came, it didn't matter what Eddie Jones was. This is, this is how it happens sometimes. Like, it doesn't matter who the fuck the shooting guard was on the Chicago Bulls once the kid from North Carolina got there. We're going to figure something out. We're going to make this shit work around him. It didn't matter who was at Young Money when Drake... It didn't matter what label Drake went to. Let's, let's say that. Drake could have went to TDE. Drake could have went to fucking Maybach music. Drake could have went to Bad Boy. Drake could have went anywhere. Drake was going to be Drake. Best I ever had was still Baby You My Everything. You know, it was still the same song. It, it wasn't like, he was fucking Canadian. It, was, it didn't matter if he was with somebody from the South, somebody from Canada. Sometimes you get caught in that. It's a lot of niggas that was on the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron came. Darius Miles, Ricky Davis. All sorts of niggas was on there. Dar Danielle Marshall. It's LeBron. At some point, none of you will be here. Yeah. The fuck can you do about it? Like, so I'm supposed to sit back and be mad about that? Shit, man, I'm gonna sit back and witness greatness like the rest of y'all motherfuckers. I just got a front row seat to it this time. I'm gonna learn something. Yeah. Shit, if I ain't gonna get my shot, I'm gonna learn something so that when my time do come, I seen how they did it. I seen the moves Nikki made when business got wrong and she changed shit up. I seen that. I seen when business got wrong, how Drake changed shit up and just kept it moving and didn't really say nothing. I seen that. I seen when Wayne had to do it. I seen So you get to see this type of shit firsthand, bro. You either going to learn or you going to sink and you going to drown. You know what I'm saying? I learned shit from paying attention to all of their successes. Even if I can't put that to use in music success, you put that to use in business. You know what I'm saying? Everything ain't about music. Like, music is cool, but just to be real, man, if a nigga gotta listen to my song 1,800 times for me to get a sell, I mean, we gonna start figuring out some new things to bring some money in around this bitch then. Until y'all figure out what a stream is. <laughs> What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.